Hey, Brian here with DIY Outdoor Life. It's getting a little cold here in the Catskills. So today I'm gonna to take you through how to winterize these trailers. I'm gonna be working on my bushwhacker, but as always, I'll go over the concepts so you can winterize anything, a bigger trailer, a more complicated trailer, or a cabin. The process is always the same, so let's check it out. Now, when we're talking about winterizing a trailer, what we're talking about is water's ability to freeze, expand, and burst. It'll break the pipes, the plastic fittings, your faucet. It can cause a huge amount of damage. So if you live in an area where your trailer is gonna undergo freezing temperatures, this winterizing process is what we do to prevent that bursting. Now there's really two ways we can go about this. The first way is to remove all of the water from the trailer. If there's no water to freeze, pipes are not gonna burst. Now we usually do this with compressed air. Just draining the trailer with gravity is usually not enough to remove the water from some of the dips and the fittings that it can get trapped in. Now I choose to do the second way. The second way is gonna be adding a substance to the water system that prevents it from freezing. I prefer that way because even a teaspoon of water is enough to break some of these plastic fittings. And even when you do a good thorough job blowing it out, there's still the opportunity for a small amount of water to be trapped in there. So the product that I'm including in the video description below is propylene glycol. It's a type of antifreeze that's generally considered the most safe. We don't wanna use automotive antifreeze, and some of the other types of antifreeze are even more toxic than they have to be. This propylene glycol style is generally considered to be the most safe. Now the link in my description you can use as a reference, because Amazon charges you a lot of money to ship this stuff. You can save a bunch of money if you go to your local hardware store. If you wanna support the channel, you can click the buy me a coffee link. You don't have to waste your money on a bunch of shipping but for some people, the convenience matters. So we're gonna start our winterization process back here where the fill nozzle is. And I have to mention this because it's getting pretty popular. I know a lot of people say to use vodka to do this job. And the truth is it works for some people. It's not gonna work for everyone. And I think the biggest advantage for people is they think it's cool to say that they're winterizing their trailer with vodka. Vodka freezes at about negative 15, negative 16 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's going to do the job for a lot of people that aren't in very cold climates. It just costs a lot extra money and it's kind of alcohol abuse. The product that I'm using is good for negative 50. And because I'm in the mountains of upstate New York, there are times that it gets below negative 15 degrees. It only takes once that vodka would freeze and my pipes would burst. You can even buy propylene glycol down to negative 100 if you're into camping in the Arctic Circle or something. So we start this process now by opening up the low point drain on the trailer. There's a little valve there that opens up. If you have water in your reservoir, it's gonna start feeding out with gravity. Now it takes a long time. The bushwhacker has a huge tank. So I got a jump start on this and I've drained the trailer already. The next thing I'm gonna do is crank the tongue on the trailer up. I like to pitch it back. That's where the low point drain is on this. Now, if you have a bushwhacker like me, this giant 24 gallon fresh water tank is actually flexible. So I'll climb underneath the trailer and actually push up on it to try to push any of the water that's left in there back towards that low point drain. Now the next step that I'm doing is optional. I'm actually gonna give this thing the Dizzy Gillespie. I put my mouth up against this fill nozzle and I'm gonna blow in. The purpose for this is to push the water out of the tube that goes from the fill nozzle into the reservoir for the trailer. You can actually feel and hear if you're pushing any water into the reservoir here. Mine is now an open passway. From here, I'm totally confident that this section of my trailer is winterized. If there's a small amount of water in the reservoir, there's room for it to expand and you're gonna be okay. If you wanna be safer and not sorry, you can take an offset funnel and add a little bit of antifreeze here. 
you see I'm working around my dog here, so be careful. This stuff is not very good for animals. So you can pour a cup, two cups, you can pour a bottle in here if you want. If you're gonna pour a lot, it's a good time to turn your low point drain off because I don't wanna pour antifreeze on the ground here. So when I come back to the galley, I'm gonna turn my faucet on. Whether I have one of these spray nozzles or one of these aftermarket ones we make, we're gonna flip the switch on the pump and we're gonna release as much water as we can. Now I don't wanna dry run the pump for a long period of time. I'm just trying to pull some of the extra water out of there. So I'm only gonna do this until it really starts to sputter and then I'll shut it off. So you can see it removed a good amount of water. This water is gonna be pulled from the draw tube coming from your reservoir and most of the content in the pump. So the most important part of winterizing our teardrop is gonna be in the galley back here. Underneath the sink, there's gonna be a water pump. It's SureFlow brand and it's metal. I'll post a picture beside me of what that pump looks like. There's one inlet and one outlet. The outlet's gonna go to your faucet, whether you have the spray nozzle or whatever. The inlet goes to that reservoir that holds our fresh water. When we turn the pump on, it pulls from the reservoir and pushes out our faucet. That's how this works. Now the manufacturers include a T on that line with this cutoff hose. I've seen people in the Bushwhacker forums asking what this hose goes to. It's here for the purpose of winterizing the trailer. Now I'm gonna do my best to shoot some shots and edit them in so you can see what's going on back here. But as a demonstration, there's gonna be a water pump located in there. There's an outlet that's gonna run up to our faucet. The inlet is gonna have a T in it and each section has a valve. So in this case, this little hose is equaling this little hose back here. You're gonna find that hose shut off with a valve. When the valve is going sideways, it's cutting off the water. You're gonna see another valve that's running back to your reservoir. That valve is gonna be in the on position. That's why the water can pull from your reservoir, go through your pump and out the faucet. If you switch that orientation and you turn the valve on that's connected to this line and shut the other valve off, when we turn the pump, it's gonna draw from this hose instead of the reservoir on the trailer. So it's gonna be as simple as sticking this hose into the jug of antifreeze and turning the pump on, and it's gonna fill our pump with antifreeze, and it's gonna push antifreeze through our galley sink. So it's difficult to make these videos short and helpful for beginners, so I'm giving you a sneak peek here. There's your water pump. Looking up, these are the two valves in question. That one's for winterizing. This one goes to your reservoir. What we're going to do is just turn those two valves. And when you're done with the job, turn them back and they'll be in the right position for spring. Okay, so I've double checked. The valve to this hose is in the on position. The valve after that going to the reservoir is in the off position. I'm ready to go here. You can take a small container and stick it underneath the drain for your teardrop so we're not pouring antifreeze out on the ground. I'm going to slide the hose into the jug and make sure the end of the nozzle is below the surface of the antifreeze and turn the pump on. The moment that that liquid turns the color red, I stop. That's it. I can retrieve my container and it should only have like a tablespoon of liquid that you can pour out at home. You can pour it in your sink, run it through your sewer system. Just don't pour it out on the ground. Now my reservoir is filled with antifreeze. My faucet has been treated and I can remove it for the winter. So you can now blow your spray nozzle out You can store this thing inside for the winter if you want. I removed this faucet. 
I'm now done using the water system on my bushwhacker for the winter months, but I'm not done using my trailer. This is just the time of year where I convert to bringing my own water instead of using the water pump on this trailer. So I know some people pull the fuse on their water pump. I generally don't. It's just the time of year where you got to keep your water warm. And in the spring, I'll show you how to on winterize your trailer. So I hope you found this helpful. Make sure you check out my other videos. Um, I have a lot of maintenance tips and mods that I've done on the trailer. Like and subscribe if you like the video. Thank you. See you guys next time.